Air here does 50,000 people in a year. We need 365 such enterprises just to meet the NSDC uh, challenge. And then what are we trying to do, uh, making the youth uh, the focus of India's skill development mission going forward? We have a demographic dividend. It comes once in the lifetime of a country. We are fortunate to be part of that phase uh, when it is coming India's way. If you don't find productive uh, work for these people, uh, this dividend might have a totally different connotation as we go forward. We have the numbers, but yet we don't have the skilled people. Uh, only uh, 12 million of the 130 million people who go to school join college. Only 2% of the people who work in industry have any form of uh, vocational training. According to NASCOM, only 20% of the engineers are available. And even industry in India sends only 17% of people for training versus 99% in China or close to 60% in Brazil, which are the two you know, the bricks of uh, the brick. What is interesting if you go forward, uh, if you look at the 20 sectors that were given for to NSDC uh, to look at, these uh, 20 sectors between 2008 and 2022 require a various number of people. It is actually 244 million people across these 20 sectors in the unorganized sector. The largest is in the unorganized sector, which is a select informal employment sector. Security guards, beauticians, uh, you know, that, uh, that level. Then comes the automotive. Uh, I will not talk much about it because you have Mr. Uppal here. And then comes construction, building and construction. Again, Mr. Kher, you do a lot of work uh, in that uh, area. You know, so the next largest are uh, uh, transportation, logistics, and warehouse, and textiles and clothing, 26 million. So if you want to scale 500 million or 150 million people by 2022, you need to have a skill training capacity of at least 40 to 50 million. The challenge is that India only has currently 5 million, or when this study was done in 2008, 9, 4.3 million as a skill capacity in all the government departments and in the private sector. So you've got to take this to 40 million or 50 million now because we lost a few years. You can look at it as 80,000 crores required every year to skill people. Uh, so government and other institutions need to find this money and give it to people to fund. Or you could say this is 80,000 crore or a 20 billion dollar opportunity for private sector to skill people and get them placed. Getting money for placement is not a new phenomenon. It is an existing practice which works in industry. Uh, many people hire a consulting company or a placement firm to hire people and they're willing to pay a one month salary as placement fee. So if we extend this to the skills that are in shortage, you can actually get a very sustainable business model uh, going forward and that is what NSDC is trying to uh, promote. So what are we doing? We are a part of the new government or the government's coordinated action plan in the skills space. The Prime Minister's Council, the advisor to the Prime Minister on skills which is Mr. Ramadurai. There are 23 ministries and all the state governments who are in this space. So to find commonality, to share best practices, to get a coordinated action group, we have the National Skill uh, <laughs> Development uh, Coordination Board chaired by the Deputy Ch Chairman of the Planning Commission, which does the central government initiatives. And then we have the private sector initiative, which is the National Skill Development Corporation, uh, which, has got, uh, uh, which has got funding from the National Skill Development Fund, which currently has a thousand crores in it. We were promised uh, another 500 crores in the budget of last year, of this year, February 2011. Challenge is to skill 150 million people by 2022. Fostering private enterprise and private sector participation. We do three things. Create the vision for large scale training and development. We fund by providing patient uh, capital. Uh, somewhat akin to what the IDBI and ICICI bank were doing when they were promoting industry in the 80s and 90s. And then we create an enabling and supporting uh, system, sector skill councils, train the trainer information system. I'll talk about it in a minute. So we're not just funding agencies, we have a larger role. 
we have a current portfolio of 33 companies from startups to large established corporates startups in unrelated business corporates like kelens in unrelated business training providers and corporates which are in the in the in the training business and ngos you see pratham uh, there uh, you see empower which is a joint venture with sat uh, there and you have global india foundation and others which are or the Inter international association of human values uh, which are there and you have ilfs education we have a joint venture with everon education it's got nothing to do with the everon education uh, which is there it is a joint venture and the centum work skills india which is a joint venture with centum there so far 33 training organizations six sector skill councils i'll come to sector skill councils in a minute the financial commitment of 1022 crores recall 5 million current training capacity these 33 would add 11.3 million to the training capacity over the next 5 to 6 years and these projects would do about 57 million people uh, going forward our target is 150 million we have a 10 year plan uh, going forward uh, each of our partners that we fund have to submit a 10 year business plan we fund 75% of the project cost typically either equity or loan maximum that you get as a grant is 10% of the project cost we do pilots uh, which are different when we are looking at a sustainability of a, of a program we look at pilots which you can give uh, varying uh, uh, you know uh, combinations of uh, different interest rates um 25% of the cost of the project cost has to be bought by the entrepreneur we do funding based on annual uh, benchmarks and annual uh, milestones that are there there will be in 311 districts by 2012 we had 160 districts till march 2011 so we would add little more than that uh, this year so it's not an urban centric uh, phenomena some states we have managed to do all districts I see one state event or two. Chandigarh is an example, but we are trying to uh, look at a pan-India presence. We also want to do sector skill councils. A sector skill council is nothing but the old form. It was known as a guild. You have the bakers' guild or the gold, the goldsmiths' guild. You know, you have the accountants' guild, which still continues. Uh, for those of you who may not figure out what I am talking, is the Institute of Chartered Accountants. Okay, so. you know it is there so we are trying to look at these the other sectors so the you know the institute of chartered accountants also researches the market labor market they say okay how many chartered accountants are required next year what are the qualifications they conduct their own exam they give their own certification they develop the delivery mechanism for industry related training the article ship etc etc and they set up standards and quality to bring global best practices in the industry so imagine this in these sectors in automotive in private security in energy media and animation it its retail we've already approved them we have proposals with nsdc which are handicrafts the banking financial services industry the foundry it hardware gems and jewelry and leather healthcare is also there uh, hopefully healthcare uh, actually is missing so these are the and we expect these sector skill councils to come up we also have uh, special priority areas we have a project for ran for the youth of jnk where we got to train 8000 youth uh, per year for the next 5 uh, years um, this is a system in which we deviate slightly from our model where we provide financial uh, support to the students in terms of stipend travel costs and stay and 50% of the training cost is reimbursed to the industry if they employ the person we also creating knowledge Uh, you heard the sector skill gaps that we talked about uh, in the different sectors. We are adding an infrastructure sector to it. We are also trying to do a district-wise skill gap and the facility for training. Today, nobody knows for certain what the private sector is doing in skills area. So we want to do a census. Experts say that you could do a sample survey. So we are doing two districts: one a sample survey and another census. then we'll flip it around to see what the divergence is we are also doing state level skill gap studies for the northeast and orissa 10 other states are on the anvil train the trainers with an organization called mart 
and the whole financing mechanism for vocational loans which is done by ISB. The ISB stu uh, uh, study resulted in a product which I'll just share with you. Four big challenges. You need to make skills aspirational. You need to expand the reach of vocational training. It's very difficult to mobilize students, right? We need experts like Mr. Kher and his team to actually do that. Quality of training and access to funding for India's youth to pursue vocational education is another challenge. We are looking at a marketing campaign. Uh, we did a um, uh, we did a evaluation. Uh, we are working at one agency to do this. Hopefully, this should be launched uh, soon after it goes through an approval uh, process. We are also taking 16 participants to the World Skills Olympics. Uh, it's not World. Sorry for the typo. But uh, they will be participating in trades such as cooking, pastry making, uh, to media and IT and megatronics. Uh, this is from the 5th to the 8th in London. Uh, the plumber is from a community college in Ongul. The jewelry person is from a village in West Bengal. For them to participate in the world skills itself is a big thing, you know, and many people are actually going to be there. Um, so this is 5th to the 8th, but we will be there from the 1st to the 10th. The ISB product lent, uh, lent itself to a loan with the Central Bank of India. Today you can't get an unsecured loan for vocational training. Even an educational loan is not unsecured. Your parents or someone has to give a security. You managed an unsecured loan product through this. So even NGOs can become sustainable because their people can get funded by this and then the joint industry. If the cost is 5,000 and his salary is more than that, then it's, a, it's a, actually a very simple thing. NSDC stands guarantor for a certain percentage of default. We are expanding this to other banks. We are also doing a skill competition to national business plan. Again, ISB is the partner here with CII. Uh, we are in the evaluation stage. I think uh, we've got a lot of entries and we'll be soon be announcing the winners. And the winners are not going to get an award. If the winner's project is fundable, we actually fund it. We have done a similar thing with the disabled through Arunim, where we have chosen six winners and hand-holding them and actually setting up enterprises where they get uh, employ more disabled people and actually Im uh, increase the reach. These are three case studies, be able, basics uh, thing, target to set up 400 centers, in fact very heavily located in Sikkim, it was a concern for us over the last few days, but all the people are okay. They started 93 centers, they looked at 2,358 students, out of 806, 603 were currently placed. They worked with Tata Motors actually in, 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 in uh, uh, Dehradun and Uttaranchal. Uh, this is the ILFS CDI which is going to set up 100 skill schools which are like mini ITIs um, in the area of leather, textile, construction. Um, eight have started. This is four, they are starting one every month uh, now. This is the uh, uh, joint venture with uh, Centum. They do 11.57 million people, 383 centers. They have actually completed 7,264 and all have been placed. That's it uh, and I will be happy to take questions later on.